In this video, we're going to go over a two lens system, a system with a converging lens and a divergent lens. The equation that we need is this equation. F is the focal length. DO is the distance between the object and the center of the lens. And DI is the distance between the image and the center of the lens. Magnification is equal to negative DI over DO. And it's also the ratio between the height image and the height of the object. So this is the principal axis. The first lens will be a convergent lens. And the second lens will be a divergent lens. The converging lens is thicker at the center, and the divergent lens is thinner at the center. By the way, it's important to know that a converging lens is also called a convex lens, and a divergent lens is also known as a concave lens. Now, let's say that the focal length, we're going to say it's three centimeters. This is for the convex lens. And the focal length for the divergent lens, let's choose a value of four centimeters. So the distance between the center of the divergent lens and the focal point, that's the focal length. So this is going to be four and this distance will be 3. Now let's say that the distance between the two lengths is 18 centimeters. And also, let's place the object at a distance of 6 centimeters. And let's say it has a height of two centimeters. Determine where the image produced by the convex lens where it's going to form and the image produced by the divergent lens where is it going to be located. And determine if that image is upright, inverted, real, virtual, enlarged, or reduced. So let's start by using the thin lens equation. For a convex lens, the focal length is positive. For a concave lens or a divergent lens, the focal length is negative. So let's plug in positive 6 for the convergent lens. Well, actually, the focal length is 3, not 6. DO is 6, and we're looking for DI. So to solve it, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides by the common denominator, which is 6 to di. If you distribute 6 di to everything in this equation, we're going to eliminate all fractions. 6 di times 1 third, that's basically 6 di divided by 3, that's equal to 2 di. 1 6 times 6 di, the 6 will cancel, and so we'll just get di. 1 over di times 6 di, di will cancel, and we'll just get plus 6. So now we can subtract both sides by di. So therefore, we can see that di is equal to positive 6. Whenever the object is placed at a distance of 2f, twice the focal length, do and di are equal to each other. So the image should be somewhere around this point. Now, because di is positive 6, is it a real image or a virtual image? Because di is positive, it's a real image. Now, 
this image, will it form on the right side or the left side? Now, granted, I gave it away because I put the blue point on the right side. But whenever DI is positive, the image is going to form on the right side. If DI is negative, you're going to have a virtual image which forms on the left side of the lens. Now, the image, is it upright or is it inverted? If it's upright, it's going to be facing the upward direction. However, if it's inverted, it's going to be opposite to the object. The object is going up. An inverted image will therefore go down. So we need to calculate the magnification. The magnification is equal to negative di divided by do. So negative 6 divided by 6, the magnification is negative 1. Because the magnification is negative, that means that it's inverted. But the fact that it's equal to 1, regardless if it's positive or negative, that means that the, the size of the image is equal to the size of the object because they're at the same height. If the magnification was 2 or negative 2, the object would be shorter, the image would be taller. If the magnification was 2, it would be said that the image is enlarged. If the magnification was less than 1, be it 0.5 or negative 0.5, the image would be reduced. It would be smaller or shorter than the object. So. Whenever the absolute value of the magnification is less than 1, you're going to have a reduced image. If the absolute value of the magnification is greater than 1, you're going to have an enlarged image. The image is going to be larger than the object. So since the magnification is negative, the image is inverted. So therefore, it's going to go on that side, but it's going to be facing down. Now, the image of the conversion lens is the object or can be treated as the object for the diversion lens. So this distance will be DO for the diversion lens. And we're going to find the new image or the second image created by the uh, second lens. So DI is equal to 6. So what is the value of DO? DO is going to be 18 minus 6. Therefore, DO is 12. Now, because DO is on the left side of the diversion lens, DO is positive 12. If DO, if the image of the first lens was on the right side of the second lens, then DO would be negative. But since it's on the left side of the second lens, DO is positive. So now let's calculate DI for the second lens. So using the same equation, 1 over F is equal to 1 over DO plus 1 over DI. For the diverging lens, F is negative, not positive. DO is going to be positive 12. And we need to multiply both sides by 12 DI. So we can clear away every fraction. 12 DI times negative 1 fourth is equal to negative 3 di because 12 divided by negative 4 is negative 3. And 1 12 times 12 di, the 12's cancel, so you simply get di. 1 over di times 12 di is 12. So we need to subtract both sides by di. So therefore, negative 4 di is equal to 12. 12 divided by negative 4 is negative 3, so di is negative 3. So since di is negative, the second image, is it real or virtual? Whenever DI is negative, you have a virtual image. And because it's negative, it's going to form on the left side of the divergent lens. So it should be somewhere at this point. Keep in mind, the focal length is 4. So therefore, if DI is 3, it's between the focal length and the lens. So now we need to determine if the image is going to be upright or inverted, enlarged or reduced. So let's calculate the magnification, which is negative di over do. So it's going to be negative, negative 3 divided by do, which is 12. So it's 1 fourth of the height of the object, which was 
the first image. So because it's positive, it's going to be in the same direction as the object. The object is going down, so it's going to be going down. It's not going to be inverted relative to the, the object, which is the first image. So it should be faced in this direction. But it's reduced, though. It's smaller. It's one-fourth the height of the first image. So let's calculate the heights for these two images. Now, we know that the height of the object is 2 centimeters. And the magnification for the first lens, we calculate it to be negative 1. So therefore, hi for the first image is negative 6 because the magnification is negative 1. Magnification is hi divided by ho. Negative 6 divided by, well actually, it should be negative 2 because ho was 2. So if you use this equation, hi over ho, negative 2 over 2, that's negative 1. Now the magnification for the second lens is 1 fourth. So it's 1 fourth of negative 2, which is, so negative 2 times 1 fourth, that's negative 1 half. So this should be about negative 1 half. My drawing may not be drawn to scale, but it's about that much. So now let's draw the ray diagram to see if what we have is close to being correct. So for the first ray, we need to draw it parallel to the principal axis, and it's going to interact with the lens. Once it touches the middle of the lens, draw a line between that point and the focal point. Next, you can draw another um, ray from the object to the focal point. Once it interacts with the, the center of the lens, draw a straight line. So you can see so far that they intersect at this point. And you can draw another line from the object straight through the center of the lens. And so the rays, they actually converge at this point. Because the light rays converge at the point, it produces a real image. When it appears to converge at a point, then it produces a virtual image. So now let's draw the second uh, ray diagram for the divergent lens. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a ray from the object to the lens. And then we're going to draw a line backwards to the focal point. And now the light ray actually diverges into this direction. But when you see this dashed line, it appears to emanate from the focal point. Now we need to draw another ray. And for the next ray, we're going to draw it from the object to the center of the divergent lens. So it's going to go like this. Notice that these rays, they intersect at that point. And because we have that dashed line, it appears to emanate from that image. So therefore, it's a virtual image. Whenever you have a dashed line intersecting at a point, it's going to produce a virtual image. If it's a solid line, as in the case of this example, whenever solid lines converge to a point, it's going to produce a real image. Now, I have the right location, but the height of the image that I drew was a little bit too much. This arrow is about half, or a little bit more than half, of the first image. So it should really be only about this much, because it has to be a quarter of the height of this image. But the image formed as predicted in the appropriate location. And it's inverted with respect to the original object, but it's in the same direction with respect to the first image. Diverging lens will always produce a virtual image. And that virtual image will be upright with respect to the object, which is the first image of the convergent lens. And it will always be reduced. A divergent lens always produces a, a virtual 
image that's reduced and upright. On the other hand, a converging lens can produce a real image if the object is beyond the focal point. Now, if the object is placed between the focal point and the converging lens, then it's going to produce a virtual image that is upright and enlarged or taller than the object. And it's going to form on the left side of the converging lens. So those are some things to know, and that is it for this video. So thanks for watching, and have a great day.